Führer German pronunciation, FY, spelled Führer when the umlaut is not available is a German word meaning leader or guide. As a political title it is associated with the Nazi dictator Adolf Hitler. Nazi Germany cultivated the Führprinzip, leader principle, and Hitler was generally known as just der Führer, the leader. The word Führer in the sense of guide remains common in German, and it is used in numerous compound words such as Oppositionsführer leader of the opposition. However, because of its strong association with Hitler, the isolated word usually comes with stigma and negative connotations when used with the meaning of leader, especially in political contexts. The word Führer has cognates in the Scandinavian languages, spelled Führer in Danish and Norwegian which have the same meaning and use as the German word, but without necessarily having political connotations. History Topic: <inaudible> Origin of the title Führer was the title demanded by Adolf Hitler to denote his function as the head of the Nazi party, he received it in 1921 when, infuriated over party founder Anton Drexler's plan to merge with another anti-Semitic far-right nationalist party, he resigned from the party. Drexler and the party's executive committee then acquiesced to Hitler's demand to be made the chairman of the party with dictatorial powers as the condition for his return. It was common at the time to refer to leaders of all sorts, including those of political parties, as Führer. Hitler's adoption of the title was partly inspired by its earlier use by the Austrian Georg von Schönerer, a major exponent of pan-Germanism and German nationalism in Austria, whose followers commonly referred to him as the Führer, and who also used the Roman salute, where the right arm and hand are held rigidly outstretched, which they called the German greeting. According to historian Richard J. Evans, this use of Führer by Schoner's Pan-German Association, probably introduced the term to the German far right, but its specific adoption by the Nazis may have been influenced by the use in Italy of Duce, also meaning leader, as an informal title for Benito Mussolini, the fascist prime minister, and later dictator, of that country. As a political office After Hitler's appointment as Reichskanzler Chancellor of the, Reich, the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act which allowed Hitler's cabinet to promulgate laws by decree. One day before the death of Reichspräsident Paul von Hindenburg, Hitler and his cabinet decreed a law that merged the office of the president with that of Chancellor, so that Hitler became Führer and Reichskanzler, although eventually Reichskanzler was quietly dropped. Hitler therefore assumed the president's powers without assuming the office itself, ostensibly out of respect for Hindenburg's achievements as a heroic figure in World War I though this law was in breach of the Enabling Act, which specifically precluded any laws concerning the presidential office. It was approved by a referendum on 19 August. Hitler saw himself as the sole source of power in Germany, similar to the Roman emperors and German medieval leaders. He used the title Führer und Reichskanzler leader and chancellor, highlighting the positions he already held in party and government, though in popular reception, the element Führer was increasingly understood not just in reference to the Nazi party, but also in reference to the German people and the German state. Soldiers had to swear allegiance to Hitler as Führer des Deutschen Reiches und Volkes, leader of the German realm and people. The title was changed on 28 July 1942 to Führer des Grodeutschen Reiches, leader of the Greater German Realm. In his political testament, Hitler also referred to himself as Führer der Nation, leader of the nation. Topic: <laughs> Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. One of the Nazis' most repeated political slogans was Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. One people, one empire, one leader. Ben Dursky says the slogan, "...left an indelible mark on the minds of most Germans who lived through the Nazi years. It appeared on countless posters and in publications, it was heard constantly in radio broadcasts and speeches." The slogan emphasized the absolute control of the party over practically every sector of German society and culture, with the churches being the most notable exception. 
Hitler's word was absolute, but he had a narrow range of interest, mostly involving diplomacy and the military, and so his subordinates interpreted his will to fit their own interests. Military usage According to the Constitution of Weimar, the President was supreme commander of the armed forces. Unlike President, Hitler did take this title Oberbefehlshaber for himself. When conscription was reintroduced in 1935, Hitler created the title of Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, a post held by the Minister for War. He retained the title of Supreme Commander for himself. Field Marshal Werner von Blomberg, then the Minister of War and one of those who created the Hitler Oath, or the personal oath of loyalty of the military to Hitler, became the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces while Hitler remained Supreme Commander. Following the Blomberg Fritsch affair in 1938, Hitler assumed the commander in chief's post as well and took personal command of the armed forces. However, he continued using the older formerly higher title of supreme commander, which was thus filled with a somewhat new meaning. Combining it with Führer, he used the style Führer und Oberster Befehlshaber der Wehrmacht, leader and supreme commander of the Wehrmacht, yet a simple Führer since May 1942. Topic. Germanic Führer An additional title was adopted by Hitler on 23 June 1941 when he declared himself the Germanic Führer, Germanischer Führer, in addition to his duties as Führer of the German state and people. This was done to emphasize Hitler's professed leadership of what the Nazis described as the Nordic Germanic Master Race which was considered to include peoples such as the Norwegians, Danes, Swedes, Dutch, and others in addition to the Germans, and the intent to annex these countries to the German Reich in 1933. Waffen-SS formations from these countries had to declare obedience to Hitler by addressing him in this fashion. On 12 December 1941 the Dutch fascist Anton Mussert also addressed him as such when he proclaimed his allegiance to Hitler during a visit to the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. He had wanted to address Hitler as Führer aller Germanen, Führer of all Germanics, but Hitler personally decreed the former style. Historian Loe de Jung speculates on the difference between the two. Führer aller Germanen implied a position separate from Hitler's role as Führer und Reichskanzler des Großdeutschen Reiches, Führer and Reich Chancellor of the Greater German Empire, while Germanischer Führer served more as an attribute of that main function. As late as 1944, however, occasional propaganda publications continued to refer to him by this unofficial title. <laughs> <laughs> Military usage Führer has been used as a military title compare Latin dukes in Germany since at least the 18th century. The usage of the term, Führer, in the context of a company-sized military subunit in the German army referred to a commander lacking the qualifications for permanent command. For example, the commanding officer of a company was and is titled company chef, literally, company chief, but if he did not have the requisite rank or experience, or was only temporarily assigned to command, he was officially titled company Führer. Thus operational commands of various military echelons were typically referred to by their formation title followed by the title Führer, in connection with mission-type tactics used by the German military forces. The term Führer was also used at lower levels, regardless of experience or rank, for example, a Gruppenführer was the leader of a squad of infantry nine or ten men. Under the Nazis, the title Führer was also used in paramilitary titles see Freikorps. Almost every Nazi paramilitary organization, in particular the SS and SA, had Nazi party paramilitary ranks incorporating the title of Führer. The SS including the Waffen-SS, like all paramilitary Nazi organizations, called all their members of any degree except the lowest Führer of something, thus confusingly, Gruppenführer was also an official rank title for a specific grade of general. The word Truppenführer was also a generic word referring to any commander or leader of troops, and could be applied to NCOs or officers at many different levels of command. <laughs> <laughs> Modern German usage In Germany, the isolated word, Führer, 
is usually avoided in political contexts, due to its intimate connection with Nazi institutions and with Hitler personally. However, the term Führer is used in many compound words. Examples include Bergführer mountain guide, Fremdenführer tourist guide, Geschäftsführer CEO or EO, Führschein driver's license, Führstand or Führhaus driver's cab, Loke Omotive Führer train driver, Reisführer travel guide book, and Spielführer team captain, also referred to as Mannschaftskapitän. The use of alternative terms like chef, a borrowing from the French, as is the English chief, e.g. chef des Bundeskanzleramtes or leiter often in compound words like amtsleiter, projectleiter or referatsleiter is usually not the result of replacing of the word Führer, but rather using terminology that existed before the Nazis. The use of Führer to refer to a political party leader is rare today and Vorsitzender chairman is the more common term. However, the word oppositionsführer, leader of the parliamentary opposition, is more commonly used. Equals equals see also.